Have you ever felt like your project's codebase is accumulated more and more technical depth with each new feature added? If so, you are not alone. In today's video, I will teach you how to handle technical depth, exploring strategies specifically tailored for tech leads like you. So, whether you are grappling with legacy code or navigating complex systems, stick around for some practical tips to lighten the load and keep your project on track. Before we jump into the importance of managing technical debt, let's take a moment to grasp what technical debt means. Think of technical debt as the toll you pay for keeping a software system up and running, even when it's not in its best shape. It happens when teams choose quick fixes over most optimal solutions. This tendency to take shortcuts often leads to code that's tough to maintain, lacks the flexibility and can cause headaches down the road. Now, the real problem is that if you ignore technical debt, it accumulates and compounds. Let me use an analogy to explain the impact it has. Imagine you are building a house. You got a tight deadline, so you rush through some parts and cut corners to get it done quickly. At first, everything seems fine, but over time, those rush decisions start causing problems. The doors don't close properly, the walls crack, and the plumbing leaks. That's like what happened in software development with technical debt. Just like with the house which showed the construction, software with technical debt can have all sorts of problems. Usually the first sign of a problem is that it takes longer to add new features, because developers have to work around the messy code. And when they add new features, they might not work quite right, because all of the shortcuts taken earlier, plus fixing those problems can be a real headache and eat up a lot of time and resources. But it's not just about the practical stuff. Dealing with technical debt can also affect team morale. Imagine having to work in a house where things are constantly falling apart. It's frustrating, right? Well, developers feel the same way when they have to deal with the messy code all the time. So developers and teams need to stay on top of technical debt by taking the time to write clean maintainable code and addressing issues as they arise. They can avoid a lot of headaches down the road and keep their software running smooth. In order to fix tech dev, we need to understand why it happens in the first place. Tight deadlines. When development timelines are compressed, developers might sort to quick and dirty solutions to meet project milestones. This rush often leads to shortcuts and compromises in code quality. Evolving requirements. As project requirements change or new features are added, developers might need to refactor existing code. However, tight schedules or inadequate planning can result in not having time to refactor and instead do patchwork solutions that accumulate technical debt over time. Number three, code complexity. Complex code bases with intertwined dependencies can make it challenging to maintain and understand the software. Again, not allocating time to refactor the dependencies plays a key role here. Spotting technical debt is essential for keeping your code healthy. Numerous tools and techniques exist to pinpoint technical debt within your code base. Here are some ways to identify technical debt. Code analysis tools like SonarCube, Code Climate, and PMD play a crucial role in spotting potential technical debt. They sniff out code smells, complexity, and duplication, highlighting areas that might need attention. Code smells are warning signs of underlying issues, while complexity identifies code that's hard to grasp. Duplication, on the other hand, signals repeated code, which can cause inconsistencies and errors. Developers also help find technical debt during code reviews. They check each other's work to spot areas needing improvement. Regular reviews keep code quality high and technical debt low. In these reviews, developers look for messy code, complexity, and repetition. They also ensure everyone follows coding standards and best practices. Finding technical debt early lets developer fix it before it becomes a bigger problem. Project management tools like Jira or Trello are useful for developers to manage technical debt effectively. You need to encourage your team to create a card every time they find something 
and needs to be fixed, but can be done right now. Then, make sure that the team reviews and prioritizes these cars periodically. This generates the muscle to tackle technical debt in every sprint. Now, let's talk about refactoring. Regular refactoring is like tidying up your room, but for your code. It's all about rearranging things to make them neater and easier to manage. Just like you might clean up your space regularly to keep it looking nice. Developers clean up their code to keep it tip-top shape. Refactoring involves restructuring code to simplify and reduce complexity. Think of it as streamlining your code so it's easier to understand and work with. This makes it easy to add new features and fix bugs down the line. Plus, refactoring can make your code run faster and more efficiently, just like how organizing your room can make it feel more spacious and comfortable. Let me give you a hint, if you are not refactoring at least once a month, you are probably not refactoring enough. Let's talk about something we all know we should do, but no one does, documentation. Good documentation is like a map that guides you through the maze. It helps you understand where you are and where you're going. In software development, effective documentation is key to preventing technical debt from sneaking up on you. With good documentations, developers can understand the code base better and make smarter decisions. Plus, when new developers join the team, they can jump right in and start contributing without feeling lost or confused. In order to explain to the stakeholders why it is important to work on reducing technical debt, you need to improve your communication skills. And in this video, I give you a few tips to be clear and concise. Thanks for watching.